Hey, man, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Uh, we're talking about uh, Brett Kavanaugh. Oh, the Supreme Court uh, yeah, yeah. nominee, yeah. Yeah. But for, 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 for Michael Avenatti to act like that's a, a shocking thing for someone to say in high school or college is just fucking stupid. Right. Especially a virgin. Like, that sounds like something a virgin would say, right? Yeah. Find does. them, French them, fuck them, forget them, finger them. It's awful. <laughs> it's it's awful. so stupid. <laughs> but we're going back now. We're just going back and grabbing things. People, how old a guy are you? I'm 28. Okay. So but people going back and grabbing shit, people say when they're 17 and 16 and acting like that identifies them as adults and it's just... It's it fucking doesn't make stupid. any sense. Yeah, it's like I, I've said some of the, I've had awful opinions in the past. I've probably got some awful opinions now that I'm not aware of. It'll take me 10 years to be like, oh God, I can't believe I thought that. Right, like, right. You'll be like 33 and you'll be like, I don't know. I said a lot of douchey things. Like yeah. that wasn't, I don't agree with any of yeah, yeah. the stuff that that guy said. It seems that we don't seem to allow or believe in growth in mm -mm. any way. You just mm -mm. go, like, uh, that's, especially as comedians, people go through your old tweets, and you're like, yeah, I said some stupid shit. Yeah. Because I used to be a stupid shit. It comes with the job. You're, you're talking for a living at times, dumb shit yeah. flies out of your mouth. Yeah, for some reason, we're held to accountable, being like, but you said this, and you're like, oh, did I? Did I say something in the form of a joke on a stand-up say that so you've decided to take seriously? Well, I, I fail to see how that's my problem, but sure. Yeah, they act like you're carving it in granite and right. saying, this yeah. is how I feel. Yeah. And I also love, like, 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 it'll be one tweet from years ago, right? And there's no tweets since then that relate to that. And so you're like, that's the person, I'm not that guy anymore. Like, I wouldn't do that anymore. Well, how do we know? Yeah, well, because there's been six years of tweets where yeah. you don't have any tweets that are like that one. Yeah, and also, you went so far out of your way to find that tweet. Yeah. You literally went through all of my, you know, private messages or the ones just to other people to find the one time I said something a little bit fucked up. Like, you ran to get offended, and I don't see how I have to... Be it seems like for that. Yeah, it seems like you're a little bit more damaged than me. Yeah, if you're yeah. the one, if you're searching like that, the yeah. damage seems to be on you. And they're finding stuff for people like like football players. They're going back and grabbing tweets from high school. Oh my god! Like, who gives a fuck what you? T if I had Twitter, I'm, I'm, obviously I'm too old for Twitter in high school. But I would have humiliated myself. I mean, it would, it would have been terrible to have Twitter when, at that age. Yeah, occasionally, occasionally when Facebook throws up something from ten years ago for me, just at, like a status I posted, I'm like, Jesus! I used to be the dumbest person <laughs> on the fucking planet. I yeah. probably still am, but it's nice to know that I'm still. Grown. But you grew up with that, like when you were when I, mean, I guess Twitter was uh, when you were probably a teenager when Twitter popped up, right? I don't think I got it until I was about tw uh, nineteen. Yeah, yeah. How about Facebook? Do you always remember that being there? Or how old is Facebook? Facebook was like two thousand. Well, Facebook started like when I was in college in like two thousand three ish. Oh, so you were a teenager. Okay. That's when it started, but it was exclusive to colleges then. It didn't start like for high school kids until like. 2006, yeah. 2007, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think I again, I think I joined all the internet sort of stuff in about 2019 because yeah, no, two, sorry, 2009 because before that I was still just enjoying the porn. Yeah. Right, it was just yeah. porn. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was like, oh, you know, you can connect with your friends on this thing. I was like, that's not why I bought this. Computer. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I can see them in person. I can't watch a girl piss in person. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, you know, there's like tons of free porn on this <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just, I got uh, guys, they update it every day as well. Like, there, there are tons of people are having way more sex than I am. This is real good. <laughs> see, at least you hit Wi Fi. When I was, uh, you know, we first got a computer, I was like, uh, there was, it was all fucking, uh, you know, 14K. Yeah. So it was dial up and it was yeah. awful. Like, download, you'd have, you would just watch a photo. Oh, yeah. Like, Download, but it was so amazing to have this coming into your house. I'll never. I mean, what a revolution to, to be able to or watch porn on a screen. You'd in be your sitting house. there, and like half of the photo would be downloaded, yeah. and then your mom would pick up the phone, which would interrupt the connection because it was all done through phone lines. Oh, and you'd be signed off. And you're, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but you can't yell at your mom. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Whatever. No, no. I'm just doing homework. Shut up. Don't go <laughs> yeah. upstairs. I was right about to see the ni the um, <laughs> yeah, Nixon yeah. Nixon <laughs> Nixon speech. <laughs> That would have been a great improv, <laughs> the Nixon speech five years ago. <laughs> well, you you started doing stand up young, right? Uh, seventeen. Yeah. Wow, I can't even. That's, I mean, that's a great. Uh, well, when did you start? Twenty one. But I mean, seventeen. There's a, a big difference between yeah. seventeen and twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, where was your first set? Uh, the Stand Comedy Club in um, Edinburgh. It's like a decent rule. Well, I say that. I actually did a gig when I was 16, but if you ask any of the seven people in that audience what I did was not fucking comedy. Oh, so, it was terrible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so I count my first gig as the one in like a real fucking comedy club. The beginner's night, but still. Who were your influences growing up? Like Billy Connolly and those guys? Or was he like too old? Uh, Connolly was, uh, yeah. I Obviously being Scottish, grew up watching a lot of him thanks to my grandparents. I was like, my dad made me watch uh, Bill Hicks when I was six years old. So I grew up watching uh, that. I love Dennis Leary. A lot of British comics like Ed Byrne and Phil Jupiter's and Mark Lamar. Um, I just I watched everything. I, before the internet came out, I used to just go on eBay and just buy any VHSs of 
any comedy. Of comedy. Do. Yeah, yeah. So I found some, I know DVDs, found some weird ones as well. I don't know if you've ever seen Jamie Foxx's um, Into the Foxhole special. Have I ever seen his stand-up? I'm not sure. I know. I remember from In Living Color. I don't know if I ever saw him actually do stand-up. That's real interesting. Is it bad? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's and I love Jamie Foxx, but there's just one bit where he's just got this catchphrase, and it's not a catchphrase, but he just keeps repeating it over and over and over again until the audience starts singing along with it. He just does, does a punchline, and then pretends to smoke a joint, and just goes, "You better blow that shit out." And he, first time he says it, there's no reaction, <sighs> but then by like the fourth time, the audience are like. Oh, we'll join in. That's what you do. <laughs> I thoroughly recommend it. It's re it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> oh yeah, there's some. De don't get me wrong. There's some decent jokes in there. Yeah, but it's yeah. Uh, I hadn't seen comedy like that at the time. So Watching as a young person, do you sit there going like, I need a catchphrase? I mean, if I'm going to be a yeah. comedian, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, jokes are okay, but I need a catchphrase. I clearly need several catchphrases. You better blow oh, that, that shit out. <laughs> Watching a catchphrase get shoehorned in. A good catchphrase is just works, and a bad one is the worst thing in comedy. Catchphrases, I offer, they should be forced on you. It's, you say something, people go, you know you say this, sorry, you know you say this a lot, and you're like, oh, I guess, yeah, yeah, I do. That's now something. That's That will be my yeah. thing. As yeah. opposed to, that's like me being like, I'm just going to say I've got a giant dick seven times <laughs> yeah. in a five-minute set. It's like, it's my thing, it's what I say. Because I've got a giant dick! <laughs> that would be a great catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Watching somebody bomb is so much, because I, I was reading a little bio about you, and you are saying that you don't mind bombing, because we it's, it's a part of what we do. Yeah. Um, and you were scared to do it in front of, you didn't want to bomb with Chappelle when you worked with him. Yeah. Which is understandable. But on the Jamie Foxx roast, you ever said Jamie Foxx roast is a comedian bombing on that roast? Ooh. I don't think so. Oh, it's think... great. Yeah. You watching, love it? It's, watching people bomb is just so fantastic. Yeah. I, I always think it's funnier if it's your friend. I think be, it's, absolutely. It's, it, especially if it's a comic that you know, you've know you grown up with and you know they're great, and then just watching them bomb, you're just like, it's, it, and they can see you just smiling in the crowd. The, <laughs> the, the worst laugh on stage to receive is the one from three comics in the back. <laughs> like when they see you do your favorite fucking joke and it just dies in front of everyone. You just hear three comics going, ah! You're like, motherfuckers, this you, sucks. Because you know they're not enjoying your act. Like, I'll bomb sometimes, and I would hear from outside, like, at the comedy cellar, when you walk in, there's like a little space outside to stand. And sometimes you won't see who's out there, but I've been bombing, and I just hear, ha! <laughs> and it's Keith, and I know Keith oh. Robinson's shit laugh. And it's just like, ugh. Why? <laughs> Keith is abrasive, isn't he? He's a fucking, he's a cancer. Yeah. He's a cancer of a person. And oh, I thought you meant star sign. Was that? <laughs> I thought you meant star sign. No. He's a cancer. Oh, no. He's a cancer. Of a person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a cancer on society. Oh, okay, yeah. good, good. Yeah. Way better. I'm yeah. actually more believable than star signs. That's right. Yeah. That's, yeah, it actually means something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you started at 17, and uh, how long did it take you to get going? Because I can't, I, from 17 to 21, I can't imagine being dedicated to anything at that age. That was good. I, you, were, you were dedicated to Satan. I was, yeah. I was very, a little devil worshiper, <laughs> but I was an evil. When uh, Jim was in, in uh, high school, I should tell Daniel. You should, sure. when, when When Jim was in high school, he uh, signed a contract in blood. Selling his soul to Satan. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Satan just returned. It was like, yeah, I'm all right. I'm actually okay. I don't need this one. <laughs> actually all filled up on souls yeah. right now. Well, I just this, I had a big one this morning. Yeah. Real juicy. But come back tomorrow. We yeah. might have a place yeah. for you. You keep this one for now, though. <laughs> yeah. What were you setting your soul for? I don't know. I thought Satan might need a suburban dick sucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, so it wasn't for anything. It was just, just in case I just wanted. thought it would be cool. And, and yeah. I thought that he might as well. But yeah. Right. Yeah. And then he did the really cool thing. Because he He's obviously living at oh, home. Of course I was. And yeah. he taped the contract to his parents' bedroom door. No, no, it's been my door. All oh, right. I would never, my parents would be kind of fruity to do that. <laughs> oh, right, <laughs> right. To my door. Do cool. it to your own yeah, bedroom yeah. door. Yeah, so yeah, your actual sure. rebellion is you'll sell your soul to the devil, but I'm not going to graffiti mom and dad's. No, yeah. no, no, I don't no. think you were committed to satanic work. Well, he hadn't responded, so I didn't know if he accepted it. If he accepted, I <laughs> Who hadn't would've... responded? <laughs> the dev. <laughs> <laughs> Humiliating. No, you're on first name terms. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I have a picture of it. That's my friend Devon. Uh, pointing <laughs> That's at it and amazingly at neat writing for for blood. Yeah. Was it so? Was it you pricked your finger or was it like a quill? No, nah, it was a I, I, probably a box cutter. But I was I had written out some corny lyrics and my friend was laughing at me like you asshole. He was right. <laughs> I found the I found I keep everything. I save every. So I found I have all these old family pictures and things from growing up because there was I didn't I'm, I am envious of people who had video of themselves as mm. kids. There's no video of me. Right. <laughs> at least if there is, it's probably. Deborah yeah. damaging. Yeah, there's video of you. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. there is. Yeah. On some yeah. site. It's in an evidence room. 
<laughs> so yeah, so I, I have a lot of photos. You have video when you were a kid, right? Yeah, so um, my parents had... Uh, um, young, Jim. Yeah. That, he's young. Yeah, <laughs> he's young. I mean, they're not, they're not interesting videos. I'm not like... Right. I was not an entertaining child. I just pissed and shot myself on camera, and my parents were like, well, these are wonderful memories. Let's have these. It's still do, nice to have, though. When you yeah. were 17, were, do you feel like you were more... Because you're doing comedy, right? Between mm. 17 and 21, a lot of us are not very self-aware and doing a lot of douchey things. Yeah. Do you feel like because you were doing stand-up then, you started becoming a little bit more self-aware and self-critical earlier yeah definitely like i think i don't know i'm I'm still an absolute dick and i've absolutely fucked up over the years but i do think like just being hyper aware of it and uh but also i had nothing else to say when i was 17 like i didn't have any valuable or valid opinions on anything so it was just oh my mom's fucking weird oh yeah hair um and but yeah getting into comedy really helped me i think improve as a person my parents will disagree but i think i improved did they want you to do this or something else no, they were genuinely thrilled with it. My dad, you know, huge comedy fans. Um, I mean, they made me, they, they, when I was in high school, they were like, still trying to get into university. And then I did get into university. And my mom was the, the one that was like, well, it's going well, so don't go. Yeah. Just stay here for an extra two years. and Because all you're going to do, I don't, I don't know how you, you guys are set up over there, but here you just fucking owe a lot of money. When mm. you're finished with college, you owe oh, money. Yeah. It's like sometimes you get a job, sometimes you don't. So if you can make money doing, you know, gigs fucking take the money oh man the amount of like when my friends went to university i was kind of jealous because they were going to meet all these new people make new friends get fucking laid have their own independence i mean while i'm living at home with my parents still for an extra two years and then after four years i was a marginally successful comic and they all had debt and i was like <laughs> right yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you get out of college you haven't it's not like you get credit for that experience no not at all like now you start life you're like yeah i started life yeah, yeah, four yeah. years ago because yeah. guess what they're doing after college Moving back in with their parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, trying to, yeah. I got a psychology degree. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do with that? Yeah. Right. What the fuck will you do with it? I mean, if you want to No, I thought it was really interesting when I was taking the classes. Yeah. And, oh, interesting. Cool, yeah, man. Yeah, cool. Enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell you what, maybe one day when I'm more successful, you can be my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to do? Is this is stand-up like the thing you're like, yeah, I want, I want to do stand-up? Or did you just kind of say, I'll try it and see? No, I, I want it. I want to be a stand up so much. Like, I grew up with it. I love it. And it's still my focus now, which people, you know, agents in LA can't understand. They want you to act? Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't mean I enjoy acting, but they're like, what's your focus? I'm like, exactly what I'm doing right now. Like, I just a bigger version of this. Do they want the, the worst? They're the fucking worst. You go to LA, they want you to have like a seven minute thing that defines you, that they can write a show around. Because yeah. they're, they're so stupid and uncreative. They think that you should bring it to them. Mm. Like, uh, you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're an Uber driver. Uh, and your mother's sick and you're an Uber driver. And they're like, okay, I'll write a five minute act on that and then they can develop a show around it but you're like it doesn't work yeah just tell the agent it's like you're my agent just come see my stand-up yeah and um, get a taste of who i am like yeah. it's out there it's public people yeah. know so i was like when agents go this is what your fans want you go i think i think i know what my fans want <laughs> yeah. yeah that's i mean that's how i fucking got them in the first place right yeah, yeah yeah but when you have a certain amount of success and they think this is what you have to do to get more and it's like no you just keep doing this and yeah. if it works it works yeah. right Cause no. all, yeah, because all of these idiots that like me, they're going to tell their idiot friends who will also like me, and that will naturally grow, as opposed to making my comedy wider spread and more accessible. But you clearly got a publicist, because at some point, you know, this Netflix, the Netflix specials come out in America, which mm -hmm. I guess is like Netflix is trying to take a lot of European comics that might not have as much exposure in the U.S. and kind yeah. of push them out, right? So you get... Which is, like, it's amazing what Netflix is doing. I don't know how they make their choices, because some people are getting 15 minutes, mm. some people are getting a half an hour. You got two hours. Yeah. Which yeah. is amazing. Did you, when, when did you shoot these? One is called Dark, and one is called Jigsaw. Yeah, I filmed uh, Dark earlier this year at the Belasco Theater in L.A., and that was after we got the Netflix deal. But Jigsaw, I just, I'd come off my tour in Australia, so that was when it was like, the show was at its best. I'd been doing it every day, but we didn't have the Netflix deal, so my agent just made the very wise call of, I'll put I put the money forward and we just filmed it to Netflix specifications and then just hoped and prayed that yeah so Netflix would take two yeah yeah and we went well we've got another one sitting here for you and they went yeah sure I mean if you filmed it oh so you were just sitting on that one yeah 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 we and that was before anything of the deal had come in and then they were like we want two because they look very similar the two like in the sense that it feels like they were shot at almost as a package uh no two set one was filmed in australia and one was filmed that's in, amazing in yeah it's smart to do though a lot of people are doing that now where you film something you just make sure again it's to their specifications and you know whatever they want it shot in and hopefully they'll buy it because they a lot of times it's cheaper for them to buy a special than it is for them to fucking finance one right yeah, yeah and then much you know the one i filmed in uh, australia uh, i just got my, my mate is a very good dop to film it and i was just like you know 
because they want you to work with certain people, whereas this one I got to work with all the people I loved. I mean, and then when I did it in LA, they signed me up with great people as well, but it's just much easier that way. Yeah, absolutely. But the reason I said you clearly got a publicist is because now, like, as the Netflix thing rolls out, yeah. every time you, like, you know, pick up the newspaper or whatever, it's like, did you know he broke up 4,000 couples? And you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, but it, but that's the, that's the you, you've now got a mythology that follows you around. Yeah, yeah. And it's, um, I'm very much enjoying the breakups and the divorces that are coming in. I've, obviously, a lot of people are are sort of saying, oh, you know, some of these are, you know, probably lies. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've also got to take into account the amount of people that have broken up that haven't told me about it because they don't want me to get the credit because I'm enjoying it so much. Right. Well, now, what is it about the special that's caused them to break up? Is it all just about relationships? Yeah. The last 20 minutes of Jigsaw is basically, it was just not meant to be a breakup show. It's in a very sort of wanky way. It was my answer to being like, it's a love letter to single people. I enjoy being single. I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I think society forces us to get into relationships because... Fucking people are terrified of being alone. So I just put that into a 20 minute routine. Turns out it resonates with 5,000 people. How, how long have you been single? Uh, I've been single for three years. Yeah. It's easier to be single though when you're like good looking dude with a Scottish accent in your 20s, right? Yeah, yeah. But like that's, that's not that, that bad. That, but that Scottish accent counts for fuck all in Scotland. Yeah. Well, I guess so. I, guess, I was thinking when you're here, it's like. Yeah. yeah when, but when, it's, when, I, when I'm in Scotland, they're not like, oh, fancy. Yeah. <laughs> what city are you from? <laughs> Edinburgh, the capital, la da yeah. <laughs> Plus, there's like, you know, with the population, there's 150 women there total. Yeah, yeah, So it's yeah, like yeah, you know yeah. them all already yeah. anyway. Yeah, 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 I've had sex with most of them. <laughs> and some of them are, you know, just women. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they just crossed the th <laughs> yeah, it is uh, being single left, but as you get older, it gets depressing. Does it? Yeah, a little bit. Not, it's not that I'm craving a person, but once in a while, the things you miss are not even sex because that's the easy stuff. It's just like, eh, just somebody, see. somebody to do this with. Companionship. Yeah. If you're doing something, yeah. I yeah, got a dog. It's not the same because then you can't fuck it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> a correction, yeah. you shouldn't. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. You can. Society frowns. Yeah. yeah. It's PC gone mad. Yeah. <laughs> Trump's America. Trump's America no, to the core. That's court. right. That's right. Thanks a lot, Obama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think you've... Do you think companionship is, as you get older, what, what you start looking for more? Yeah, but being single is nice, too, because you can kind of do what you want to do. You know, but once in a while you look for a little bit more, like, yeah, just something to do with someone. Yeah, but I, I also think that you, I, you can get companionship from, you know, other people in your life. I got a lot of my close friends, uh, you know, some of them are girls as well. And you just go, all right, well, I've not spooned someone in a while. Can we spoon? They're like, yeah, all right, fuck it. But then again, I'm young, so maybe that's an entirely different thing. It is, right? yeah. And, you know? and do they have a boyfriend who knows they're spooning? Because no girl wants, no no guy wants his girlfriend spooning. Yeah. No, well, <laughs> it was just spooning. It, we're just buddies. Yeah. This yeah. professional that's what Kavanaugh was doing. His erection was just his erection was just in the small of my back. <laughs> right, that's <laughs> actual. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. There was underwear on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. But but we were both wearing the same underwear. <laughs> right. And it was like naughty pants. <laughs> this professional cuddlers. Yeah. There are people that cuddle. This guy, uh, I forget. I think his name is Adam. And there's a, a site called like the Cuddlist. And there's people that actually need affection so bad they hire cuddlers. They don't fuck you. They literally will just come over and hug. There's something sexual about it. Oh my it, God, that can, is... I think it's a sensual thing, but... I, sensual. I probably for the person hiring you. Right. But I, I think that the uh, cuddler probably just comes over, because there's all kinds of rules. Yeah. Oh, really? I haven't done it, but yeah. You yeah have you thought about it? You know, you not, no, I... You, on some level, you want a cuddler? No. You want to cuddle a little bit? I don't. No, because it's hard for me to cuddle without being... Turned on. I have to have something with a person to right. hug them. Right. I you can just hug a stranger. If I was attracted to her, I could. <laughs> That's a weird thing, yeah. Cuddling with a... Well, that would be awful if you were the professional hugger and you turned up to someone's door and you were like, oh, I can't do you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't share a human moment with yeah, you. I yeah, apologize. Yeah. Here is all of your money back. You are fucking disgusting. <laughs> if you're a professional cuddler, you always have to carry a pizza with you just so you can pretend you're at the wrong door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you order the... Oh, no. A hug. I can't. I can't. Work. No, for the pizza. It's for health and safety. If yeah, you, if you, no. And if you're ugly... I mean, germs get on this. Then. <laughs> yeah, that's gotta suck if you show up but it's a big business i guess people love it yeah people like to hug and cuddle is it a big business though i've been hearing about it for a while really yeah i, I mean really i don't have. think it's that big of a business who the fuck would want to hire a, a cuddler troy you ever hire a professional cuddler no but i get it what <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there are people that, like, worship feet, they're way into that. I mean, everybody has their something. But yeah, if but you this know, is supposed to be... <laughs> Did you just compare a foot fetish to hugging? Yeah. <laughs> this is supposed to be non-sexual. 
This is supposed to be just companionship. Well, I mean, the people that worship feet don't want sex either. Yeah, but it's a sexual thing. It is very thing. sexual. I, I mean, for, you're going to tell me that I don't you know, believe it. one of these attractive girls, some guys going in to hug her and cuddle, you don't they're think They're not that, all really attractive. Like, she's very beautiful, but they're not all attractive. But so don't you are, think they're jerking off when they after they leave? Like the, the, the clients are jerking Dude, off I when don't, they go home? I don't know. Jerking off in the bathroom when they're done. In the toilet? Yeah. I think so. I don't know. I think so. There's no doubt in my mind. I, I mean, to, what, who, who, why would you want? Because it's not real companionship if it's from a stranger. They're just hugging. It's the physical yeah, it's intimacy. The, yeah, the closeness, I guess. I mean, I still find it fucking Really weird. bizarre. Yeah. 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 It's a strange just thing. Just to hug a person. Yeah. Just fucking Uber Eats with intimacy. Like, <laughs> I, I don't understand. Because like, even though, obviously, surely, like, getting a hug is obviously nice and it makes you feel better. Surely, the second after the hug, they're like, that's my shift over and they fuck off. You're like, oh, no, I am incredibly lonely. If anything, the fact that I had to pay someone to drive to my house to hug me has just really rammed home that so I'm alone. It might make you feel yeah. lonelier, yeah. When they leave, you're like, oh, yeah, that for them, this was just 80 I bucks. Yeah, I can't yeah, believe yeah. I just paid somebody to hug me. Yeah, yeah. When I could have, for, yeah, for, for, 20, for 20 bucks more, I could have paid someone to fuck my right. <laughs> <laughs> I would have felt really good too. Yeah. Although, if you're hugging someone for money mm -hmm. and then they're you're done, you might be done hugging in 30 minutes and go, huh, all right, I got that out of my system. Now I've been hugged, I'm finished. <laughs> There's no other responsibility. The level of crazy that you are if you're paying somebody to hug you, it's not out of your system. Mm. I don't know about that. Maybe I'll try it. Try please it. try please it. Please try it. Please. <laughs> By the way, please hire a fucking hugger. You you also would not be this like, no, I'm going to prove Sam wrong. See? Normal people hug too. I did it. Yeah, you're not normal, Jim. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's no, nothing normal about you. But I, I it is a big business. That's the point. Did you uh do you find that since you did the special that women I would imagine cuz I was watching the special and I was like he is probably getting more women than ever cuz women will watch it. Mm. And either they'll be like, fuck that guy, but kind of have that, oh, he's a jerk thing, or do the thing that I've seen women do over and over again, which is like, oh, he doesn't want a relationship because he hasn't met the right girl. That is a lot of it. Yeah. That is a, yeah, yeah. There's that thing of like, it's just, it's because he's not met me yet. I go, no, no, it's because I'm very comfortable with myself. And, you know, I travel for nine months of the year and I enjoy being selfish at this time in my life. But right. They're like, no, no, but me though. What happened to the last one? How, how long were you with the last one? Uh, I was with her for, it was only about three months, but it was quite a intense, brutal. Oh, was it? Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who broke up with who? I broke up with her. Was yeah. it, was it, did she, st was she like, uh, was she stuck to you or was she okay with you leaving? No, no, she was not okay with it. It was a whole, <laughs> was a whole thing. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a big old thing. Uh, but that was the one where I just went. I basically do the same thing. Every th every two years, I'll get into a three-month relationship. I'm like, it's been two years. Maybe I'm ready for one. And then I get into it, and three months in, I'm like, oh, this is fucking awful, and I hate this. Right. What? Yeah. And it's not them. It's me. I'm just like, there's and it comes some point where they're like, how was your day? And then I'll tell them about my day. And then they'll start telling me about theirs, and just part of my head goes, I didn't fucking ask. Right, yeah, I don't care. Not what like I just, yeah. And the second you realize you're not interested in right. the day, you're like, oh, I need to leave you. Like, you genuinely deserve someone who gives a shit about your boarding day, and right. that's not me. Right. So Now, do you do you sit there and go like, look, I need you to understand, I am an asshole. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this because I'm a jerk. I'm being selfish. It's over. And then they're like... Well, you're a fucking jerk, and you're like, right. Yeah, correct. Established. Yeah, 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 yeah. Established. Yeah. Like, are you a pretty honest guy when it comes to breaking up and just taking the heat? Yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah, just go ahead. There's nothing you, there's nothing you could have done to make this work. It's right. all me. It's all of my stuff. There's nothing you could have done. I'm just, but I'm the, not interested. The last girlfriend did not take your word for it? She did not take my word for it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> was it now, was it phone stalking, or was she showing up at gigs? No, no, it wasn't too bad. No, no, no. Like, it was just, there was a, like, it was a heated, heated argument, and then I had to just sort of sever all ties. And we're, we're on decent terms now, but there was a long period when it was, I think we both hated Did each you other. live with any, I've never lived with anyone. I've never lived, I've never lived with a partner now. I've lived with friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a roommate um, and his girlfriend, but I kind of, I, I wouldn't mind it at this point. I've just never done it. Maybe I'm too old to adjust. I'm afraid of that too. I'm 50. I like my own shit everywhere. Yeah, I, th I think if somebody comes in who's a just a different level of cleanliness to you are, like I'm quite a clean person, but if you come in and be like, why is your socks there? Because that's where I leave my socks. That's just... Well, yeah, the longer you're single as an adult, the more you're just like, I've figured out how life is. Yeah. Like, this is how I live my life. And if you can, if we get along really well, and I'm attracted to you, and you can enter into this life, yeah. 
then cool. Yeah, yeah. You, but if we start changing things up, I you know I already kind of had figured it out already. Yeah, yeah. And the longer you go, I feel like the more stuck you are into this. Like, no, I've already figured out how I do things. Well, I always think like if you get, if you're getting into a relationship with me, my life's pretty good, and you've got to make it better. Right. Like, I, I enjoy you're happy single. with your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and that can change, and it probably will change. Right. But for the time being, my life's good, and if I'm going to be in a relationship, you have it has to be better than being single. Like you can't be in a relationship with me and make it worse than being single because being single is always an option for me. Right. The it's right there. It, yeah. The second it's the second I'm annoyed or pissed off, and I am, I'm like, oh well, I'm just going to go back to the good version of this. Right. Are you the afraid one... of being alone? Yeah, no, I've been yeah, <laughs> I've been no. doing that for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Like and that... also, yeah, when I'm alone, it's great because right. you're not there. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> the big difference. Of, yeah, the best part of being alone is you're not here and I don't have to answer this phone call every fucking day. I see. Are I you see. a cheater? Uh, I have cheated. Yeah, uh, but not not on my not on my last two guys. I, I cheated when I was like 19. Did you get caught? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, caught. T- t- I probably did now. Right. But I can't imagine she listens, listens to this. I, I I cheated and I felt really bad about it and I had that thing in my head where I was like I genuinely feel awful about this. There's no point telling her because um, I, you know, I beat myself up for like ages, and it made me realize that I did like her. So we stayed together for like another year and a half, and I didn't cheat. A lot again. of times when you do tell, you're not telling to do the right thing. You're telling for your own yeah to yeah, relieve your burden. Mind. Yeah. yeah, but that's fucked up because it's totally fucked. Up. It fucks the other person up, and they never they never trust you. And also, and it's not only the fact that they you know they don't trust you, they don't trust any partner after that. So I just right. didn't want to like I made a mistake. There's nothing she could do. I was drunk. I was an idiot. I cheated. I felt bad about it for ages. Yeah, uh, live in your shit. Yeah, and get uh, over it. And then we broke up very amicably, and I've you know never told her because she just she doesn't need to know. Right. Oh, there's a path of human wreckage behind me. <laughs> you have not. Oh. Are not all of your breakups healthy? No, no. no. That's a shame. No good. No. How many That's have you had? I, I I know. I mean, a decent amount yeah. in fifty years. You. I mean, I've been dating since I was, I guess, sixteen or whatever. Seventeen, little girl. You know. Yeah. And I've just you know the cheating. Oof. You should put yourself at sixty-seven years old. By the way. What's that? You said over fifty years, and then you said I've been dating since oh, I was seventeen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just you just aged yourself at sixty-seven. I, Jim uh, is not sixty-seven. I misspoke. <laughs> yes, I, I, I miss uh, subtracted. Uh, just people listening at home been like, oh, I didn't know that, but still find it believable. <laughs> right, right. They're just changing his wiki right now. It's sixty-seven-year-old comedian Jim Norton. <laughs> well, there's that actor Jim Norton we talked about yesterday. I don't know how old he is. I think he looks to be a, somewhere he's around seventy. I think yeah. he's like seventy-three. Yeah, but yeah I've, I've cheated before, and after a while, you get so comfortable with it, you just become comfortable lying so have you done have you been in uh in situations now where you like you've got somebody that you're hooking up with or somebody that's your uh, partner but not you're not in a relationship right it's just like yes. somebody you're hanging out with right now they think that this is building towards a relationship you are well aware that this is not building towards a relationship mm-hmm. and you have to hit that impasse i always make sure that if- I uh, just all the way through. Just I, f- I find that like if you're honest all the way through, you can't get in trouble. You can still uh, they can still be annoyed, but you can't be accused of being a fucking liar at any point. But have you seen that like even when you're honest, they yeah. go like, oh, I didn't like they're not hearing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've had that, and and you know you just get into the uncomfortable discussions. But the, and you can tell you know through the way they're sort of acting. I'm just like just remind you. I my thing is always like I travel for like nine months a year of this job and I really like that and I want to keep doing that because you know that's how I'm going to become a better comic and you know I'm not bringing anyone on the road with me apart from my tour support right like I'm going to I enjoy being single I'm going to and then also like if they ever don't get the message you know, I'll, I'll bring them along to a stand-up show where I talk about how much I like being single. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you can see them. You can see them in the audience being like, "He doesn't mean it." And I'm like, "No, no, no. I'll I'll do this bit just to you. I'll make eye contact." <laughs> yeah. I got I got a, uh, a girlfriend got really mad at me once. I was on stage. You know, you flirt with someone in the crowd. It's bullshit. Mm, but you're right. just joking and asking them out obnoxiously, and you don't yeah. mean it. But she got really angry at me, and I'm like, "How could you not tell that was fucking?" I'm, I'm, I'm on stage. It doesn't right. mean anything. Yeah, I, that would be one of the moments where you just go, I, I, unless you learn this lesson immediately, that most of the things I say are jokes and I don't mean them, we've got to end this now because I'm not getting into an argument where I have to get into arguments on the internet where I explain that something was just a joke. The last thing I want at home is explaining that something was just yeah. a fucking joke. Yeah, you know what's, the, I mean, that's the great, because I'm married and my wife never, whether it's about her yeah. or about anybody else, I don't remember the last time she brought up anything that I said on the air that morning. She doesn't listen. She just, she, yeah. <laughs> so half, the, half the time she, she doesn't hates listen. The show. <laughs> yeah, she's like, used to be better. Yeah. <laughs> half the time, I mean, the old morning show. Yeah. Half the time <laughs> she doesn't listen, and the other half she's just like, 
No, I mean, I don't. You're, yeah, you're well, doing the show. Like this yeah, is just what I, you do. Yeah, it's it's it's, a, it's like a heightened version of yourself. I understand it's true to you, but it's not fully you. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like I can talk to you right now. Yeah. And get the answers. Yeah. yeah. Like this is an actual conversation we're yeah. having. Where yeah. did you open for Chappelle? Uh, the Punchline, San Francisco. Oh yeah, he, he, that's a that's like a hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty seat room. I think. It's an amazing club, and uh, he'll just go in there to work to, to work out. He'll do yeah. a string of nights. That's Robin amazing. Williams used to work out there. Yeah, it's it's an amazing club. You can't make money there because it's so small. So you, you'll do cobs to make money because it's a bigger place. Mm -hmm. But like again, Chappelle's not doing those gigs for money. He's doing them just to work on material. Yeah, yeah. It was and it was amazing to watch. Like it was just one of those. Yeah, I never. It wasn't even a dream come true because I'd never even pictured it as a potential things right, to do in my right. career. Like at no point am I sitting in Scotland being like, one day I'll open for Dave Chappelle. <laughs> that sounds like a reasonable thing to dream of. Right. He's right. in a Star is Born. I just saw a, a, a trailer last night with Dave in it. He's in a Star is Born. Is he in that yeah, movie? Yeah, Dice is in it. Um Lady Gaga, Bradley, Bradley Cooper. Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. a big Lady Gaga fan, right? I do. I like her a lot. You do. Yeah, you I like her more as a singer. You're uh, would you consider yourself a little monster? Yes I would. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I like her very much. Have you met her? Um, briefly for a photo, but yeah. I don't know her. Oh. I've never talked to her. Would you like to? A lot. Would you make her your girlfriend? Yeah, she's sexy. <laughs> she's fuck because she looks like she doesn't wear deodorant. Like she, she's <laughs> she's fucking sexy, man. She's like gr like I almost said gritty, but then I remember. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like you're 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 putting your own fetishes out on people. I am. Yeah. yeah. I, I, she looks like the type who would be okay with that. Yeah. She's also just confident as shit. That's a big turn on for me. Any girl, yeah. that, any, any girl that just confidently stands in front of you and calls you a piece of shit, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is it about? Is it, is it a true story or no? no? No, I don't think it's a true story. I think it's like an old movie. Or, yeah, they, it they, is. They've it's remade, a remake. Yeah, yeah, I think they've remade the film like seven or eight times. Yeah. I think Barbara Streisand was in one of them. Yeah. Uh, but they've changed this one up a bit, as they always do. Oh, yeah. Who else was in? I always fucked this up with uh, Star 80, which was about Dorothy Stratton, the Playboy um, model who was murdered by her boyfriend, which was played by Eric Roberts in the movie. Nobody knows any movie called Star 80, bro. Star 80? Dorothy Stratton? The fuck are you talking about? I mean, come on. Troy, you ever heard of a movie called oh, Star Chris, 80? Chris Christopherson, that's right. Travis. And Star 80. You like that movie? I think that's fake. I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Look up Dorothy Stratton. Look up Star 80. Johnny Carson interviewed her once. It was very interesting because it was not a great interview, but the fact oh. that he was able just to... Uh... Rob, Star 80? Nope. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Is that uh... Star 80? Oh, 1983. I've not seen... <laughs> Yeah. It wasn't even a big movie in 1983. Yes, there was. Star 8? Of course it was. The Dorothy Stratton story. <laughs> okay. I didn't even know Dorothy Stratton is. Uh, based on the true story of Playmate of the Year Dorothy Stratton, who was murdered. Playmate that. of the Year 1981? 1980. Oh, my God. <laughs> but she was murdered by a boyfriend. There weren't many Playmates that have been murdered over the years. In 1980, she was murdered? Who cares? Well, it's a big story. All it's right. not a big story. It was <laughs> it maybe was, in 1980. Yes. But that was what it was. He was very jealous and he would it go was to the nominated for a Golden Globe. <laughs> yeah, it was a real movie. <laughs> Eric Robert Mary L. Hemingway, Eric Roberts. <laughs> Star Who 80. else was in that movie? For Pete's sake. I hate to do this to Isn't you that great? And that 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 is that is the uh, great but, thing about like this type of work is that you can do something like the film Star Eighty, where like you get a Golden Globe nomination and for your craft it's like, Oh my god, I made this big movie, I'm getting nominations for awards, and fast forward thirty five years years later and a bunch of people will be in a room <laughs> laughing at what you made going nobody's ever heard of that bullshit yeah, yeah. that's right well, jim's also said it so much now that it's his accidental catchphrase like we've gone back to the star, star 80, 80. Said yeah <laughs> you know what movie i like star, star 80, 80. <laughs> yeah dorothy stratton i'm fascinated with some of these old uh and i i, I told you the first time i met gene simmons i asked about a playboy model who had been in his shoots in the 70s oh uh, yeah star stowe so I'm like, whatever oh, happened? I, I said, whatever happened to Star Stowe? And he goes, uh, and then Opie and Anthony laughed because they thought I was making the name up. Uh -huh. They didn't know who she was. Right. Or that it was a real person. And they laughed and she went, that's not funny. She died. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, she was so fucking hot, man. She did a genius to date her. And she would do pictures like, look up the Gene Simmons Star Stowe pictures. I don't, we're off on a She's tangent. She's dead. Damn. She passed away. Yeah. I'm she sorry was to hear that. fucking sexy, man. I'm sorry to hear that.